Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're looking at this 2016 Nissan Altima. I'm going to be pointing out the emissions components locations on this vehicle. So stay tuned. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share while you're watching along, please. And don't forget to comment below with the year, make, model, and engine size of the vehicle that you're working on that this video helped you out with. First off, here is your under hood label. This label lets you know important information about your vehicle. First off, you have two three-way catalytic converters. Right here lets you know that you have a heated oxygen sensor. That's your post-cat oxygen sensor. Also a wide range heated oxygen sensor. That's going to be your pre-cat oxygen sensor. And that you have sequential fuel injection. This label also lets you know your engine family number, your oil viscosity, and some other important information about your vehicle that you might need when ordering parts. So take note that you have a underhood label if somebody asks you some information about it. To get started on the components location, is going to be your vapor purge solenoid right here on the intake manifold. Looks pretty easy to replace or check if needed. When there is no voltage applied to the solenoid, you should or it should be able to hold vacuum. So a real easy way to check this is just take a hose off, connect a vacuum gauge to it, apply some vacuum, and see if it's working. That will cause a list of codes if it does go bad. Lean codes, rich codes, a bunch of different stuff. Those codes will be listed in the description below as well. Next, right here on top of your valve cover, you have your PCV valve. This is your positive crankcase ventilation valve. This allows blow-by or pressure built up from the combustion process that is leaking into the oil system to be released into the intake manifold and burnt through the combustion process. If your PCV valve is bad, you could get excessive oil leaks, uh, blue smoke coming out of the tailpipe, lean codes, rich codes as well. Next, you're going to find your bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor, or your wide range oxygen sensor in this case. Let's squeeze down between the engine and the radiator, which should be easy for you to do. Bank one, sensor one, oxygen sensor. This right here is going to be the sensor that the computer uses uh, to read how much uh, fuel the engine is using. So this sensor essentially is controlling your gas mileage a lot. If this sensor is bad, you could get a very, very weirdly acting vehicle. If you're going to replace it, make sure you get a sensor that connects in directly to the factory plug, which is right here on top. Don't get something that you splice in or have to cut in and uh, splice the wires connect. Always get an OEM direct connect or a direct fit, never one of the uh, splice ins. To get your rear oxygen sensor or your bank one center two oxygen sensor, it's located on the top side of the exhaust pipe on the bottom side of the engine. You're going to see it right here below your CV shaft. Get a circle around it right there. Bank one sensor two oxygen sensor. This is going to be the sensor the computer uses to monitor your catalytic converter. It should not affect your air fuel ratio or the drivability it should only be there to check the efficiency of the catalytic converter so that is your rear uh, oxygen sensor again if you're going to replace it make sure you get a oem direct fit don't get something that you splice in and to gain access to it you're probably going to have to go right here through the front passenger back wheel well to gain access <clears throat> They could cause a few codes, like the P0420 would be your most common code. That O2 sensor could be bad, or probably a cat. Moving along, we're going to get to the EVAP vapor canister. Coming up, this canister is where your vehicle stores your vapors, your fuel vapors. So the fuel that doesn't get burnt, that vaporizes, that we can't release into the atmosphere, gets stored in this vapor canister right here and is released into the engine later to be burnt uh, through the combustion process. That's going to go through the vapor purge solenoid. But here is your vapor canister. Now, if you're having a problem pumping gas or getting gas to enter the fuel tank, you might be having a problem with your vapor vent solenoid. That's going to be easier accessible through your driver's side rear inner wheel well. You'll get a nice little view of it right here, but it is kind of hard to see. If you do have to replace it, good luck. But while you're in there looking at your vapor vent solenoid, make sure your vent hose, so the hose coming or leading from the solenoid itself, the vent solenoid to the air filter and the ambient or into the air, 
make sure that hose isn't plugged. It's common for spider webs or rodents or something to get inside that hose and clog it. It doesn't take much pressure to get it clogged. The computer is very finicky, so always make sure that that hose is nice and breathable. I remove it from the vapor vent solenoid and clean it out when I am down here, if I am near this area, because it is super common. So here is your vapor vent solenoid. Hopefully this video helped you out on your emissions component locations and gave you somewhere to start doing your DIY repairs. Make sure you ask in the comment section below or give us a call on the Scotty's Hobbies hotline for the Scotty's Autos Talk. Check out Spotify or check out the podcast on Spotify and check out the Facebook. Hopefully this video helped you out. I'll see you on the next hopefully helpful video. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies.